All right. Hello there. I am going to demonstrate how to use a shaft warping paddle. I've got 10 threads threaded through it already. And I've got this rig here for all of my uh, cones of cotton. I'm using 8-2 cotton. And I've got 10 threads. And uh, they get threaded every, it's a slot and a hole threading. So there are 10 threads and, and and as you move the, uh, or you flick the warping paddle up and down, you get a different cross. So to begin, we open up our cross and we place it here on our beginning peg. And I'm going to use my hip to uh, hold the warping mill still. And I'm going to come and move the threads in the paddle over to the side and I'm going to place the cross over the middle peg. Then I'm going to flip the paddle to the other side and open another cross and put that cross over the peg and the end of my peg holder or cross piece I guess you might call that. And so now I also want everybody to notice that all the threads are coming in from my right into the pedal and coming out on the left. So, as I hold the paddle, I hold it in my hand with my thumb around. So, I've come over the peg and I'm also splitting the warp as it comes over the uh, crossbar. Now I've come off the peg and split the warp over the crossbar and just so that you can see by moving my hand back and forth how the openings get created. But that doesn't really even matter right now except that to show you that's kind of how I'm holding tension with my fingers in the back and you just kind of do like that. That's the motion. So, but now, my fingers in the back are also keeping even tension on the warp as I wind it, and I'm going to wind a seven yard warp, and my middle is two yards around, so this is two yards, this is the beginning of four yards, two, four, six, and then now I'm getting to my last peg. And when I get to my last peg, this is part of the trick. We've got, uh, it's just like when you're using your warping board. When you get your last peg, at one end, and well, with the warping paddle especially, we're going to go over one and under two. And notice that I'm going and winding around in a counterclockwise fashion. So I'm over one, under two, over two, under one. And what this allows for is my threads still remain coming cleanly off the back of my cone feeder, or whatever the device is. So now I wind back to my beginning spot, and I'm just using my hand to push the middle, and using my hands to kind of keep the threads under tension and coming cleanly. Sometimes I have to jerk the paddle just to clean things up and you notice though now I'm back to the beginning and I've still got tension and you can see clearly the opening of the threads because I'm holding my paddle so the threads are open and I'm bringing my first pass over the end of the cross piece and the first peg and then I'll Pull the threads to the side, and you need to come over here, perhaps, and see. I hold the threads to the wow. over the first peg. Now I'm going to flip the threads to the other side so I have my cross. And on this end, and this is the big trick, on this end, we go clockwise around the peg. So we go clockwise around the peg, and now... We make, after that, now we have our new opening here. Again, notice that my threads are still 
coming in cleanly from the right to the left of the paddle but so now we've come around the last peg I've got my my opening it goes over the first peg flick my hand I got my other opening it comes up over that last peg and now I've made my two crosses and I'm ready here's my cross this is my they call this a false cross I think or or something and then as and we're ready to wind back to the right side when we get to the right side here at this end again we're going to go counterclockwise over one under two over two under one and what I want to note about this is that we're winding ten threads at a time so this is the cross where we will do our counting to keep track of how many threads we've got and also since we've got ten threads at a time some people also refer to this as the rattle cross because if you're going to be laying your threads in a rattle now they'll come off at 10 ends at a time. Maybe you're doing a 20 end per inch or end per inch, yeah, uh, project. So you might lay two sections in your rattle. However, um, I'm winding with 10 threads, so they will, I can count at least there by 10s, and so that'll make it easy. So now I'm going to go back again one more time. Whoop, watch out, Ellie. To the very beginning, we'll do one last example of how to do the cross here. And notice I've still got my hands just holding those threads, helping to guide them in to the paddle or warping paddle. Paddle because sometimes they get a little stuck, but that's okay. And now I'm back to the beginning. Use my hip to kind of hold the mill. Open the threads, get a nice clear opening. over the end and the peg. Make my cross for the second peg. Clockwise around the end peg. And you see I'm already got my opening to slide over this peg. Just twist my hand. I get my new opening for the last peg. And again my threads are all still nice and clean coming off of my warping or my cone holder and I'm ready to make my next way back. Over one, under two, over one. So you see that once you get really efficient with this holding the threads and using the paddle, you can wind a warp of 400, well, I have been known after some practice to wind a 400 thread warp in about 20, 25 minutes. And you see how we naturally come to that end and the, I just have my this little bit of tension and it's naturally open, all ready for me to do my cross, wind around, do my cross. Oh. All right, so now I'm at the end of the warp. I've got one more set of crosses to make, so open up my cross over the peg do my second cross over the second peg 
And I'm just going to wind around clockwise like mm -hmm. normally do it, and do it twice. And the next thing I got to do is, of course, cut my threads. So I cut my threads, and that will hold them. And then the next very important thing mm -hmm. is Aww. tie a knot in this thread before mm -hmm. you have it threaded from your paddle, because we don't want to unthread the paddle if you're winding multiple warps. Mm -hmm. Then I'll just lay my... Generally, what I do is I take my thread, loop it around my little thing here a couple of times, and I just stick it in the end of this uh, top of that cone, and lets my paddle stays right there, set up and ready to go for the next one. And then I come back to the mill, and I untie that little twist I did, undo that twist, and I take and open up that section. So now I've got my two sides, my cross is at the bottom, my two sides, and I just make an overhand knot. Then these pieces get trimmed off. Thank you. The next thing you gotta do is you gotta tie it off. So I do six ties. My first tie, goes at the loop that's at the my tie-on peg. And I just tie a tie through all those threads just so that I know that they're all caught in something. And I don't tie it real tight because I'm probably gonna dye this later. And I don't want this to be real or so tight that I can't, those threads don't have room to separate. So I want this to be a loose tie for right now. And then my next tie is going to be at the actual cross. Mm. And again, <clears throat> it's not going to be a real tight tie. And I come up through both sides of the cross and just fairly loose but tight in a knot so it doesn't come undone. And then we do have also a choke tie at each end and I do all of these all three of these same ties at each end and for my choke tie I take a, a length of string and I wrap it around a couple of times no. and then I end. This is the cross end that I'll be using and putting leaf sticks into. At the other end of my warp chain, I do what they call a rattle lease. And the rattle lease is where we just counted. And that also, I'm winding in groups of 10. So if you were laying your warp chain in at 10 ends per inch, it'd be really nice to, or this, you know, picks them off for you at 10 ends per inch. But so again, though, I'm also tied around that cross to maintain it that also allows you if you want to flip it you could pick off your threads at 10 threads you know you'd have a, a cross with 10 threads per cross and then I also have a choke tie here and then another tie so I have six ties to hold the loop so a loop a choke and a cross tie at either end and now, let's see, do we see that? A loop, a choke, and a cross at either end. So now I'm gonna unchain, or take the warp off, and chain it up rather. And okay, so I'm taking the first loop off the first peg. Now I'm gonna chain it off kind of like a crochet chain. As I go, I'll keep uh, doing kind of a crank and yank because I want to maintain good tension as I chain off. And I always come in from left to right, not back and forth. I'm just going to kind of pull on my warp chain as I pull it up or, un or chain it off to make a pretty braid. And 
keep my threads all nice and neat. And I'm using my hip once again to as a brake to hold the mill from un unwinding all my warp and dumping it on the floor. Here we are at the end of the chain, and I'll just lift this off, do a few more loops, tuck it in, and there you have it. 500 threads in about 10 minutes. 500 threads, 7.5 yards long. Hooray.